I call the meeting to order and ask you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning and welcome to the December 11, 2018 County Commission meeting. I would remind you to silence your cell phones and the meeting documents are on the end of the counter in the white folder. And if you need a listening device, Carol or Craig can help you up here. Uh, we're gonna start out our meeting with a recognition of a retirement. So Diane, could you at least meet me in the middle of the room? <laughs> And this is a little gift from department heads and from the commission. And thank you, and thank you for bringing your friends along. And <laughs> <laughs> We'll give them a second to clear the room. <laughs> With that, we'll move on to routine business. Item number one is consider a motion to approve the agenda. So, so moved. Second. A motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two is approve the commission meeting minutes from December 4th, 2018. So moved. Second. A motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number three is bills to be paid in the amount of $2,302,750 four dollars and eighty seven cents pay the bills second the second comments commissioner bart um Mr. commissioner bender. bender had her hand oh. up <laughs> commissioner bender it's like a race up here um i just wanted to point out that uh the vast majority of the bills are um a, our second drawdown for the construction um in the amount of one million five hundred eighty one thousand and some change and um so the total um, budget for the construction was a little over 40 million and and we after two drawdowns we now still have about 38 million dollars left so there's a lot of progress out there if you've had a chance to go by and um, it's particularly noticeable um, as you drive down minnesota because there's a very large garage door at the very top of the building so <laughs> it's very interesting um, but uh, we continue to meet. We have a meeting again today on that. So. And if you come from the north, it's like, oh, it looks like it's done. Because like, I've come from the north, so a different perspective. So, I was going to say that exact same stuff. And uh, because Jean said it, I don't get to say anything. I have to keep my mouth <laughs> shut. <laughs> well, with that, we will let you vote on approving the bills. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number four is reports. Item A is the Highway Department monthly construction project update for 2018, and that's on file at the auditor's office. And I'm just going to give a plug for the highway, which I don't think they're in here. This is a great report if you are interested in what's going on the highways. This is a great report, and I'm really glad we added this to our list of reports because I enjoy looking at there's pictures, and I love to look at pictures. So I'm giving a plug for them. Item number five is personnel actions. Item A is consider a motion to approve the routine personnel actions. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item B is a special commission action to approve the hire of a ground scrape keeper. Carrie. Good morning. Good morning. Carrie Deaver from Human Resources. Uh, the first item I have for you is approval of a groundskeeper. This position requires basic knowledge of groundskeeping, and our candidate has nine years of experience. Uh, experience with his own business, mechanical abilities, and a relevant degree. So we're asking for three steps above the hiring range for this. Okay. Any questions for Carrie on this hire? Motion. Move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item B, C is a special commission action to approve changes in the step increases. 
Carrie. I think you all know that we've been working towards transitioning to a new payroll system that's going to be effective next July. As we were working on that, we realized the new payroll system has a capability that our current system doesn't and that it can calculate step increases on the date they're effective. Right now, we round them to the nearest step or the nearest beginning of a payroll period closest to the step date so that we don't have to go through those manual calculations. Um, but we'd like to take advantage of the system's capabilities and move towards making it effective on the actual step date. In order to do that and to run accurate parallel payrolls, we want to start that change with the beginning of the pay or the new year, which is already this Saturday. So we are bringing to you quickly three items for your approval and consideration. First would be the handbook change to update the language. And then because our step increase effective date is also in our contracts, we're asking for um, contract amendment approval from you for both the Highway <coughs> Union and the Deputies Association. Okay. So I'm going to read the motions, and if I can have first and a, a second or a pass on it. It's consider a motion to approve an update to Section 8.5 of the Employee Handbook on step increase effective dates. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. A motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two is consider a motion to authorize the chairman to sign an amendment to the agreement between Minnehaha County and the Highway Union on step increase effective dates. So move. Second. Motion and a second. There's no questions on these, are there? I kind of just flew through them. Commissioner I have Edward. a comment yeah, at some point, but I can wait until the end. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. And then item number three is consider a motion to authorize the chairman to sign an amendment to the agreement between Minnehaha County and the Deputies Association on the step increase effective date. Motion to approve. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Commissioner Bender. And I just had a brief comment. I just wanted to thank Carrie and her staff um, and everyone that's working on this transition um, in our software. It's uh, This is just one of the capabilities that we pick up. I also want to thank the um, Highway and the Deputies Associations for responding promptly so that we could get this in place and being um, very um, good partners in all of this. So they really just thanks to all of you. Thank you very much. And then we have item D is a special commission action to approve emergency management personnel changes. And we have two parts of that. This is really some cleanup items for you. Uh, there's been some evolving changes in emergency management and we've just recently had um, two staff announce that they're leaving, one for retirement after many, many years and one for a different opportunity. Um, so it's been a good opportunity for the Sheriff's Office to consider configuration. And with that, in the new reporting structure, we're here to recommend two changes. One is a retitling and reclassification of the Director of Emergency Management position. Um, we would like that to become a Sheriff's Office Director of Emergency Management. And with that, we're recommending a pay grade change from 24 to 21. Um, also, as the sheriff looked at and evaluated staffing, uh, he is willing to try absorbing some of the responsibilities from the administrative secretary position. So we are asking for your approval to eliminate that position with the caveat that if workload becomes a little higher, um, the sheriff may need to come back and reevaluate that. Okay. Any additional comments? Okay. Do you have any questions for Carrie? Otherwise, I'll read these two for a motion. It says, consider a motion to re approve and retitle and reclassification of the Director of Emergency Management, pay grade 24, to the Sheriff's Office, Director of Emergency Management, pay grade 21, effective 12-15-18. Move for approval. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item two is to consider a motion to approve elimination of the sec uh, administrative secretary position for the emergency management effective December 15, 2018. Make a motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, Thank Carrie. You. Item number six is abatements approved, uh, recommended for approval. There are none. Item number seven is notices and requests. Item A is authorize the auditor to post notice of the hearings on Thursday, December 27, 2018, to consider supplements, supplementing the 2018 annual budget. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, commissioners. Kim Adamson from the auditor's office. Um, we have a request before you this morning just to approve uh, notice of hearing. The budget hearing would be scheduled for December 27th, our last scheduled meeting in this calendar year. Um, and the, the supplement requests are all in the general fund this year. Uh, or excuse me, well, there's a small one in emergency management. $352,700 in the general fund and $22,500 in the emergency management fund. 
Thank so you. again, this is just a request to schedule the notice of hearing. Is there any questions? Otherwise, we'll take a motion. Make a motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item B is authorize the auditor to publish notice of the sale by public auction on January 10th, 2019 of a surplus 2000, 2005 Sander truck and plow and blights. DJ. Good morning, Commissioners. DJ Boothy, Highway Superintendent. Uh, we had a uh, sale or attempted a sale on Iron Planet for this, uh, this truck uh, a few weeks ago, and we did not meet the minimum bid requirement. And so uh, we had just had the, the minimum set a little bit too high. I think the reserve set a little bit too high. So um, we're requesting to re-advertise and, uh, and lower that reserve amount a little bit and hopefully get some interest and some bidding. And we also think that uh, bidding it over the... Uh, uh, not over the holidays, having it actually bid in January will, will garner a little bit more interest. The last one was over the Thanksgiving Day holiday, so uh, I'm guessing there wasn't as much traffic on the, on the website. So uh, requesting your approval to do the advertisement and, and bidding. Madam Chair. Commissioner. Uh, so when will you try to sell it after the holidays? January 10th is the, the sale okay. date. Um, motion to approve. Motion. <coughs> Are there any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, DJ. Thank you. Item number eight is planning and zoning notices. There are none. Item number nine is petition for compromise of lien. DPNO number 92445 in the amount of $2,194.40. Melinda, good morning. Good morning, Melinda Storley, Commission Assistant. For your cons consideration, petition for compromise of lien DPNO. 92445 in the amount of $2,194.40 represents two fees for public defender representation provided to the Leany in 2018. The petitioner and Leany were not married, but were joint owners, owners of the property located at 519 North Waltz Avenue. The Leany has quit claimed his interest in the property to the petitioner, who is now in the process of selling the home and is scheduled to close on December 20th, 2018. The petitioner expresses in her narrative the circumstances which have led her to desire to sell this, the home. She is requesting a compromise and release of the lien only so far as a real property with no payment. She claims a salary of $40,000, assets totaling $17,260, liabilities totaling $113,872. Her 2017 income tax shows a refund of $3,852. Any questions for Melinda? Is the petitioner present? You don't have to stand up. You don't have to say your name. Um, do you have anything you want to say? You don't have to say anything. Um, bring back to the commission. Questions, comments? Commissioner Barth. I, I would ask uh, state's attorney uh, what our status is on this in as much as they were not married. So the fact that they were not married but jointly is, own the property. Is the the uh, this the focus should be that there was ownership in the real property. Uh, the Leany uh, had an interest in that property. That's what the lien has attached to. Uh, while the Leany has quit claimed that interest now to the petitioner. Uh, the question before the board is whether the board wants to relinquish the lien against the net proceeds of this sale. And so you have the authority to consider uh, the request. Um, the statute gives you the authority to compromise and, and uh, subordinate or whatever you think is uh, appropriate. Uh, there's certain language in the statute, but the, the uh, some is that you have the authority to consider this. So the question uh, really is the relinquishment. If you compromise this lien, um, you'd be giving up the net proceeds that are reflected in the closing documents. So because they owned property together, now the lienee has quit claimed that property interest to the petitioner and thereby that, I mean, I don't think that changes the fact that you have a lien against this real property. Does that make sense? 
It does. I think in, um, in accordance with what we've done in the past under similar factual circumstances where the, um, the county services were provided to a recipient to defend the recipient against a crime, um, for a crime committed against the other co-owner of the property, um, I would be in favor of removing the lien from the property and leaving the lien on the um, recipient of the legal services so that this property could be sold. That would be my motion. I would second that. I have a motion and a second. Any additional comments or questions? I would uh, reiterate the fact that uh, the individual who is getting the relief had no uh, responsibility for some of the activity that was uh, she was dealing with and uh, I appreciate the fact that she's willing to come and at least be here to answer questions I do believe that the individual who received those services from the county is responsible and should be uh, held responsible for those okay. any other comments or questions all those in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, excuse me, that has to be a roll call fault. <laughs> Sorry, I have it on my notes. Barr? Aye. Bender? Aye. Benega? Aye. Aye, Berger? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you for coming. You sure didn't have to, but thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Next item is opportunity for public comment. Is there anyone who would like to speak on anything that is not on today's agenda? Okay, that will move on to regular business. Item number 10 is a public hearing to consider a transfer of the retail on off sale malt leverage malt beverage license by Renner Corner Incorporated. Olivia. Yes, Renner Corner is simply changing ownership. The business name and the business operations itself will remain the same. Um, the current owners are Dean and Sandy Sorum, and it will be changing on January 1st to Paul James and Randy Sorum. Um, and these have been reviewed by state's attorney, sheriff, and planning and zoning. Are there any questions for Olivia at this point? This is a public hearing, so is there anyone here that would like to speak in favor of this transfer? Is there anyone who wants to speak against it? I'm not seeing anyone, so I would look for a motion from the commission side. So moved. Second. A motion a second. We have a roll call vote. Yes. Bender? Aye. Benega? Aye. Bar? Aye. Aye, Berger. Yes. Uh, motion passes unanimously. Thank you for coming. Item number 11 is a pre uh, brief presentation on the Glory House affordable housing proposal by Mr. Johnson. Good morning. Coming. Good morning, commissioners. Thank you for uh, allowing us to, uh, allowing me to come and give you an update as to where we're at with our uh, turtle race to put up uh, affordable housing. <laughs> Uh, but we're uh, slow but steady wins the race. So, mm -hmm. um, let, let me see. Mr. Johnson, uh, IT can help you if, they, if you want them to flip your. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's much better for me. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, <coughs> just a brief history because I think most of you are probably aware that we've been in the community for 50 years. Uh, founded by First Baptist Church, Roger Fredrickson, and a uh, congregation there. Um, our name, the Glory House, uh, came because of uh, the time it was founded in 1968 was also when Martin Luther King had been assassinated. So that's, that is the history. Today, um, we have 84 beds, 60 men, 24 women, very complex clients as as the commission is undoubtedly aware uh, we are accredited by the american correctional association as well as the department of social services to provide substance abuse treatment 2017 we had 414 residential clients with 62 percent completing that program and moving out into the community we also had over 700 clients in our outpatient programs. We have about a $3 million annual budget, employ just over 50 people, and we provide services to, uh, to, to, to keep the gap between what's going on in terms of the community for work, housing, uh, programming, and uh, a place to say that's uh, uh, for our clients. So, 
we've been working with Lloyd Properties and we are planning on, as well as the city uh, and other players as well, but our goal is to raise 72 affordable housing apartments uh, that located on the ice skating rink, the former ice skating rink that was just adjacent to our property. We worked a compromise out with the city to, uh, they gifted a portion of it and we paid $50,000 for a piece of that land as well. We will have the first 24 units, let me go ahead and, <coughs> the first uh, 25 units um, uh, is priced out at about $2.5 million. Phase one, we need to come up with $202,000 by the end of this year, which we're working on. But you see the other pieces are also provided uh, by the South Dakota Housing Development Authority, either through home funds or tax credits. The, 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 the beauty part of this and the need that we saw was that so many of our clients and as well as uh, many of the people coming out of uh, jails, prisons, whatever, they go back in the community and they don't really have an affordable place to be. And it's not close to services. So our goal was to create a continuum of care that goes from uh, being in prison to maybe a halfway house and on into, their, into the community. Our clients, our folks, go ahead and bump it up one. Our, our clients are, are uh, people that have felony records and as you know in, in Sioux Falls, trying to find housing is already difficult but add on there a felony record, a uh, history of substance abuse, uh, perhaps a history of, of unemployment, and it becomes even uh, more challenging. These units will be affordable in that we're looking at, at least for the first 25 units, they'll be rents from $505 to $555, and that includes everything but cable. So. Um, we see it as an opportunity for the clients to have a place to live that's zoned appropriate for felons, close to services, which I think is key in the whole realm of providing case management, substance abuse counseling, mental health care, ongoing, um, and put them out in the community. We know uh, that um, our clients, they are about 98% of them have a substance abuse disorder. Of that 98%, about 65 to 70% have a diagnosable mental health disorder. So you got substance abuse, you got mental health, and then you add uh, the layer of, of criminal justice issues that most of our clients have. So part of this whole continuum piece is trying to also give the brain time to heal itself in a safe environment. So they go from either prison, jail, uh, perhaps a halfway house, and then into the community where there's supports. And um, we see this as a prime time to continue that, con uh, that continuum because so many of our clients, they come out of our facility and in two days, two weeks, they're starting using again. So why is this a priority? because housing is such a problem in Sioux Falls. Um, we provide employees for employers. In 2017, 83% of our client base was uh, gainfully employed. Um, in 2000, 2017, we provided 338 employees for 145 different employers. So <coughs> there's a workforce development piece here as well. We also believe that um, providing this option uh, uh, is a way to save money for the taxpayer through savings in jails, <coughs> courts, uh, tax revenue because they're working. Um, so I think there's a lot of positives to do this. And we're creating taxpayers. Uh, for many of our clients, um, they have been tax users, but I think we have a responsibility to help them also be a responsible citizen. Over half our clients have kids, and that's sometimes lost in this mix. It's not just the, fam the clients that we're talking about, but it's also the, the kids that we're trying to reconnect them to. So 
through a partnership with the city. Um, it was uh, a unanimous vote that we secured this property next to Glory House. If you look at the um, PowerPoint, you can see that what was gifted to Glory House, the city still owns half that lot, and so they'll do whatever they, they wish to with it. And we purchased uh, about a three-foot strip at $50,000. Um, so that's where we're hoping to build the first 25 units. It'll be on the north end. I mentioned Sheriff Milstead here because he also uh, was in at the chamber uh, when he went to the Chamber of Commerce and uh, requested uh, their approval on a campaign. Um, we used the Thrive Report to talk about housing. Um, we do have, uh, if you recall, the Thrive Report talked about housing needs. Uh, one of those needs are for felons. Um, so. Uh, the, uh, the South Dakota Housing Development Authority city support, we're working at Lloyd's Properties, uh, trying to bring this forward. So those are kind of a little bit small to read, but on the north side of the property where the ice skating rink uh, was, because it is now torn down, um, and they would not let me operate the heavy machinery to tear <laughs> it down uh, for liability purposes, <laughs> but maybe next time. Um, so, uh, but we're putting the first 25 units on that north side. It'll be connected with the other units as we move into a phase project um, going forward. So <coughs> we're, s we're gearing up to have a capital uh, campaign uh, our request was approved by the city uh, or by the Chamber of Commerce for a 1.35 million uh, uh, raise and we will see uh, start all that work beginning, well, it's already started as most of you probably know it, those campaigns take a while. We'll have our official kickoff of our uh, capital campaign in November of 2019. Um, our first building, like I said, at 25 units, uh, we are hoping to break ground in March. Uh, we've got to come up with, uh, we have a gap of about $90,000 to come up with by the end of the year, so we're working hard on that. Um, so if the county has uh, the, the desire to have an investment and uh, certainly be willing to talk. Um, We've really come a long ways, and this has been a long process. You know, it's actually been something that's been on the the on our plate for the last eight to ten years. We started this process, so it's been a slow-moving <coughs> process, which is probably okay. But we're at the point now that we're ready to break ground. Uh, we have to do. Uh, we have to raise the two hundred and two thousand dollars, and. And then we will be uh, breaking down it, uh, breaking ground in March. Um, I've been told March it's probably going to be April. So uh, then we look at actually having a building to move into in either uh, mid September or mid October. That's great, fast. W nothing's been fast with this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say that. But, uh, but we are finally there. We're, we're reaching where we need to be. The first 25 units, I can't tell you how many inquiries I've had, uh, people, you know, needing housing. So, um, uh, we, so we appreciate anything that the, the county can do for support. Can I answer some questions? Thank you, David. Any questions for David? Dave, one of the uh, things that has come up in a couple other conversations that I've been involved with, do the participants of your program pay any of the rental cost when after they receive not only the services, but more importantly, they find a job to uh, stay in the community? I know 83% of them are working at something, uh, which is awesome. Um, is there a sliding fee for rental reimbursement, so to speak? 
in our in our current operation that correct yes in our current operation clients do pay a fee to be uh, to stay in the residential facility or uh, participate in the ongoing counseling and stuff like that so it's based on um, uh, uh, once they have employment and have the ability to do so then they do pay yeah they, they're paying they're paying something I can I go again? Yep. Uh, I don't want to surprise or shock anybody, but um, I would like to have this conversation again at the end of the year on the 27th when we know a little bit more about where we're at as a county financially. This program saves the county money. Mm -hmm. There's no question in my mind about that. And uh, if we can find a way from savings or wherever we're at at the end of December, and I know that's a short turnaround time for our <laughs> staff, but I would like to have that conversation when we know a little bit more about where we're at financially because I really do feel that we have some responsibility of maybe not ownership, but uh, keeping people out of the $43 million project we have next door. Well, and, and I appreciate that very much because I, I, I see it as well. It's I think you know, uh, somewhat Justin said it's really an investment, but it really is a huge investment that I think have long-term payoffs for the taxpayers, for everybody involved, and especially the families and the clients themselves. You've got data to support your, um, your keeping people out of recidivism. You, you guys have reports of, or data of, of successes of people too. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, it's, yeah. it's, got, it's proven. Commissioner Bender, yeah, or well, Bender, excuse me. And I was just going to, I mean, I was, you didn't really talk about it, and I understand why, because the, the point was to talk about what your new project is, but um, to help people understand what a good investment it is, I think you, it's a good opportunity for you, you to brag a little bit about the great results that you guys do have out there. Well, you know, if you look at, you know, we have 62% complete the program now that's not where our goal is our goal is 75 percent that's so we're always shooting for more <coughs> but if you look at the complex clients and you you guys are well aware of who's in your jail you know you're you're talking about substance abuse you're talking about mental health and you're talking about a variety of other what we call criminogenic factors that bring people into the court system so we do have any, everybody that's in the program have a chance to address their substance abuse, address their mental health, have a case management uh, uh, program, have employment services, and start re, uh, reconnecting really with the community, their families, and friends. Um, the, you know, I was asked by somebody that's not local, but they were talking to me and saying, well, why only 83% of your guys are employed? You guys have a two point, well, about a two, 2.4 unemployment. You know, why aren't they all working? Well, our clients, I mean, we deal with the t f folks that have some of the worst records that you'll see living in the community, to be honest with you. And it's hard for them to sell themselves to some employers. But it's also folks that have, many of them haven't had a job ever. Many of them don't understand that it's important to get up and actually show up to work on a daily basis and to put in a hard day's worth of work. So that's part of the structure of the program that really works is because we hold clients accountable to go out there and to to do the best they can do in terms of learning how to be a good employee and learning how to be sober I mean uh, tomorrow night is our, our uh, annual Christmas party for many of our clients and they tell us this every year this is the first time that they have been sober for a Christmas for 10 to 15 years <laughs> you know or have they been in prison this is the first time that they've had an opportunity to buy presents for their kids and mail them gifts and so we're trying to create this whole positive pro-social thing about this is what most of us do. I mean, this, this isn't something that's unusual. This is what most of us do. You know, uh, we, 
we take care of our family and our friends and we move forward by by doing the responsible things that adults need to figure out how to do mm-hmm. so it's it is very difficult to um, for our clients to go in the community and stay sober and it's very difficult for them to maintain a job but by having the structure and the backup of people that really do care about them we do see at least 63 percent complete the program successfully commissioner barth uh dave (coughs) you're a pretty soft-spoken guy but i this is really a huge issue and the stuff that you're doing is so so important for our community along with some other uh, non-governmental organizations and you know i'm on my soapbox a little bit here but why don't we have a tax on alcohol that can pay for the cost of alcohol you know uh, perhaps the uh, purveyors of booze in our community would chip in a couple of million bucks to help this i doubt it but if they had any kind of public-minded uh, uh, attitude, they would. And uh, it, it's uh, irritating to me that uh, uh, it depends completely on, on uh, regular people to contribute and that the taxes, we can't afford with our tax base to do much, but without you, it would cost us a lot more. The taxpayers are being saved millions of dollars by your operation. And uh, it seems to me that those that cause the problem ought to step up and, and contribute to the solution. Anyway, that's my comment. Thank you, Commissioner Barth. Additional comments? Well, Dave, thank you for coming and giving a presentation. We always like ha- hearing and we'll be looking forward to progress in the report. And I guess we will be discussing this again on December 27th. So Great. Be you're happy welcome to, to come back if you up. would like to. So thank, thank you. you for coming. Mm-hmm. Thank, thank you. you. Item number 12 is consider a motion to authorize the 2018 budget supplements using departmental personnel savings. Kim Adamson. Good morning again, Kim. Um, Commissioners, uh, we have an internal budget policy requiring that departments receive authorization from this board to use any uh, personnel savings, savings on salaries and benefits, um, to offset any other budget overages they have um, in their departmental budgets. So we have five requests before you this morning. The total is $211,000. Uh, there should have, there were uh, re- requests from the various department heads attached to your briefing memo. And we can go through each one individually or. How would you like to handle it? Do you want her to speak on each individual one or do you want to make a motion on, on the supplements? Okay open to whatever your pleasure is. I'd make a motion for all of them. I have a motion and a second to um, authorize the budget supplements using personnel savings. And if, if there's no more comments, we'll need a roll call on this. Um, Paige Tina. Hmm. Aye. Aye. Bender. Aye. Benega. Aye. Aye, Berger. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. And I'll just let the um, listening audience know that we do have a thorough uh, review of what this is. We've all read it. We're all very aware of what it is. And if anyone else wants to question or look at, we have documents available that they can come and see what the supplements were. So thank Correct. you, Kim. Thank you. Item number 13 is authorized the chair, the commission chair and the Minnehaha County Sheriff's Office to sign a vehicle lease agreement renewal with Vern Ida Motor Cars Incorporated for one vehicle at the cost of $295 per month through December 31st, 2020. Um, this has to do with the HITA program funding reimbursement expense. Joe. Good Hi, morning, Joe. Commissioners. Joe Bosman with the Sheriff's Office. Uh, what I have before you this morning is a renewal request um, for you to sign our vehicle lease agreement with uh, Vern ID Motor Cars. This is for a vehicle for our drug investigator assigned to the Haida Drug Task Force. Um, the, uh, the amount of the lease is $295 per month. Um, it is set for, we've changed it from a one year to a two year, just so we don't have to come back and go through all the, uh, this again every year after year. Um, there is an option in there if we do things, think things are not going well, we can either party can get out at any time. Uh, this is a refundable uh, expense as part of our HIDA grant funding for this position. Uh, so we, we pay the bill and then the state reimburses us for this cost of this. 
Um, the good thing about this is that Vernite is really good about working with us. They understand that uh, our drug investigator has to change out vehicles frequently as part of his duties and investigations. Um, and so it kind of affords us to, you know, it does say lease, but it gives us the option to swap out vehicles as needed in throughout the duration of this agreement. So uh, I would request, if possible, for the commission to sign this vehicle lease agreement. Okay, thanks, Joe. Is there any questions for Joe on the lease? Motion? Move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Item number 14 is authorized the chair to sign the 2019 agreement between Minnehaha County and Dr. Jeff Luther for Quality Assurance Director for Rural Ambulance Services. Greg. Good morning. Craig Dewey, Commission Office. Uh, this contract is uh, between uh, Dr. Luther uh, and Minnehaha County for quality assurance uh, regarding rural ambulance service delivery. The county has six uh, different regions uh, where uh, ambulance services are licensed to cover. Uh, they include some uh, private services as well as uh, volunteer ambulance services and uh, Dr. Luther uh, reviews different metrics to ensure that residents throughout the county are receiving uh, timely and adequate service. Uh, the contract terms for 2019 are exactly the same as 2018. It's a contract for $30,000 and is payable in 12 monthly installments. It runs calendar year uh, 2019. Okay. Any questions for Craig on that? Is there a motion to approve? There is. Second. Okay, motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Um, item number 15 is liaison reports. Are there any reports? Commissioner Bender? I just have a, a short one. I just would like to uh, do a brief shout out to the Public Defender's Office. Um, you know, a lot of times in here we spend a lot of time um, talking about budgets and dealing with really difficult issues for the Public Defender's Office. And I think sometimes what gets lost in that conversation is the fact that we really respect the people who are working in that office and their dedication um, and their commitment to their clients. And uh, this week, uh, Tracy, uh, who um, is the runs that office, sent out a letter that an intern who worked there had uh, written, um, just kind of an excerpt out of a, her final project for that. And it just really came across in that letter that I think was shared with all the commissioners, um, the, uh, not only the valuable learning experience that that law school intern received as part of that program, but the true um, commitment that the folks in that office um, show to their clients and they work under very difficult circumstances, which we recognize. And, um, and so I just wanted to just publicly acknowledge them for the hard work they do. The same thing would hold true for the folks in the Public Advocate Office. Um, the, those are people who um, have a real commitment to their clientele and work hard every day, and we do appreciate that. Thank you, Commissioner Bender. Additional comments or liaison reports? I was, um, I will just mention, I was gone last week, as you probably all remember. Um, left Jean with a stack of papers to sign is what I hear. Um, I was uh, traveling with the state of South Dakota, paid for by the Annie Casey Foundation, again, looking at um, juvenile issues. Um, there was, uh, it was a select group of people of different states that got together and talked about how do we continue to um, move juvenile issues in the corrections part of it forward. Um, not just alternatives, but what's right for the kids, but yet keeping the community safe. It was a really good collaborative um, conference. They ran it totally different than any conference I've ever attended, and I won't go into all the logistics of how it was run, but there was a lot of time to, um, to talk to other states and how they solved problems, and then to get back together with the state team, which I sit on the state um, JDAI uh, expansion group, um, Juvenile Detention Alternative Initiative Expansion Group, and I sit on that group, and so our exec team was there at this conference, and it gave us a tremendous amount of time to work on what our action plan is going forward for the next two years. And I think we've came up, come up with some really positive goals um, and ideas, and our state coordinator um, is working on some of the issues that we brought forward. Um, it, was, it was good to meet other people. Some of these people I've known from before at other conferences I've attended, and so to reconnect with them and find out how they're going forward. New Jersey was one of them that was there, and their state has just recently gone statewide with changes in their juveniles. So every single county in their state uses a risk assessment instrument before um, in the pre-adjudication stage of their juveniles, and they have alternatives available and have had huge success. So it was fun. There's a couple of states out there that are complete the states that have all gone towards um, the concept of 
of using alternatives instead of incarceration where possible. So it was a good conference. We learned a lot. Madam Chair. So are there states that are sort of reluctant to go in that direction, or are there states that have not yet picked up on this, uh, this new process? I, I'll use South Dakota as an example. When we started this in um, 2010, 2011, um, it was just Pennington County and Minnehaha County. And you look at how many years ago that was, and we're still working on expansion in South Dakota, and we're only working with, I believe it's four other counties, I'd have to really think, but a few other counties, because it takes a while to make, to, you know, what is, what do you have available? How many kids are you actually incarcerating? If you're not incarcerating anybody in your county, it's not an issue in your county. And so we're, we're working with counties that actually have kids who are there incarcerating, and how are they dealing with it? And it's also um, a messaging issue. Do you talk to them about, oh, you need to change the way you're doing things, or what can we do to help you to um, improve what you're already doing? And so it's not always coming in with a hammer. South Dakota isn't a statewide JDAI or you know change in philosophy. I think we've changed the philosophy, but not every county is is doing everything we could, and not to say anything negative. It's just it's just the way the system works. So. Um, there are a couple that are statewide, but not very many. Some of them are, you know, a quarter or three quarters or whatever, and we're just getting started here. So, if there are no more liaison reports, I would look for new business. Is there any old business, Commissioner Bard? Um, Commissioner Bender had her hand up. I sorry. Oh, go ahead. That I, I went first last right time. You can go first this time. That's because I'm such a well. I, <laughs> yes. Anyway. Uh, I wanted to mention two things. One I could have mentioned earlier, but when I first started, we we never we almost never went a week without having abatements on our agenda. Yeah. And with Kyle and now with Diane, they've been virtually eliminated except for maybe twice a year where we had a, a group of abatements. And uh, it just shows that that office has been functioning at a better level than it was uh, back in, in the day. And the other thing I was going to mention is in talking to one of uh, uh, the, our friends on the city council of Sioux Falls, uh, they had a uh, alcohol renewal for a p location that uh, had had 154 police calls in a year, and uh, there was some discussion about uh, whether or not to renew it. I think that they did, but compare that to the Sorums there and, and Renner Corner where they've been running a great business. I don't know if I ever run for office again who I'm going to ask to put signs up there, but in any case, uh, <coughs> I, uh, I just, I'm glad we don't have a problem with the location with 154 police calls in a calendar year. Thank you, Commissioner Byrd. Commissioner Bender. And I just wanted to give a brief update. Um, I had the opportunity to participate in the Siouxland Community Library's Read for the Record, which if you guys haven't done it, it's super fun. <laughs> I it's thought really it was fun. really fun. Yeah. Um, anyway, they uh, had an opportunity to read to 5,125 people in our community on that Read for the Record day, and it's just a great opportunity to um, spread the love of reading uh, to kids across the community, and I really appreciate them for their effort in, in organizing that event. It's a lot of volunteers to corral and coordinate, so. And I'll give a shout out. I did it a couple of years ago when it worked in my schedule. And they, I live rural, Minnehaha County, and they accommodated me by finding one of my local school districts so I didn't have to drive to Sioux Falls. And then I was actually able to read to a couple of the rural schools, which you'd have to have somebody go out there. So that was great. And they do do an awesome job. So. Mm -hmm. OK, if there are no more old business, I would say a motion to recess Minnehaha County Commission meeting. So moved. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. We will be reconvening um, in a few minutes for executive session. So thank you for coming.